Hey, people. It's me again. So, anyways, one of the things I have to mention here is about, like, the different fandoms and stuff. And, in a way, I think it was one of the creators, uh, I think it was Scott Cotton, who is, uh, created the whole Five Nights at Freddy's, you know, as far as that goes. And his take on the whole fandoms is that every fandom has a toxic element and all. So, in this case, it's like I'm, I'm part of a, a fandom or two. You know, as far as like Sailor Moon or um, Power Rangers, Super Sentai series, you know, that sort of thing. And then as I was like saying that earlier, it's like one of the houses over here was decorated with uh, Star Wars stuff because of the the Last Jedi. And speaking of that, you know, one of my brothers is into Star Wars, and another brother is into Star Trek, you know. So, and also, I think it was my cousin-in-law is also into Star, Star Wars that much that he created names for, uh his own Jedi in, in that, um, my cousin's, uh, kids are named after that sort of thing. So, and in a way, a lot of fandoms like that also spawn other fandoms, because in a way, um, the Mass Effect game series is kind of inspired by Star Trek and Star Wars for that matter. And it also has a massive fandom in a way. You know. Plus in a way. My cousin-in-law. Wouldn't really have time to play. The whole. Um, Mass Effect trilogy as far as that goes. But. I think if. Uh, if he had the time. To know about what is going on in the Mass Effect trilogy, he would understand why it's so popular with a lot of people. I mean, so much that was popular that, that, uh, that it also caused some sort of controversy in some ways, you know, when... I mean, not just uh, all that sort of stuff there, but it was also the fact that a lot of people had complained about how bad the ending was as far as with Mass Effect 3, and that they redid the ending to make to satisfy the fans. And in a way, as far as with uh, the latest entry in Mass Effect Andromeda, which is completely... Um, separate from the trilogy as far as that goes, that a lot of people were disappointed with how the game turned out and you know, and that was basically one of the been like one of the worst games this year was Mass Effect and Drama now. I mean I'm not saying it was like terrible or anything, but I think it was pretty good. But, but in comparison with the, the rest of the, the trilogy, it just doesn't really quite stack up, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, and in a way, that might have been, like, the case with any of these other, like, other, uh, game series and all that kind of stuff, you know, all these other little, uh, uh, 
I forgot what they're called again, you know, the IPs and stuff like that, you know? You know, but it's one of the things I have to point out about the, about as far as, um, as far as that goes. But in a way, I think the, as far as um, any other fandoms there, there's always going to be like these haters and stuff like that that come around at that one point or another. In a way, I think I had to deal with that, with haters at one point or another, you know, when it came to Sailor Moon for that matter, you know, but in some ways it's like there were some haters of Sailor Moon that did have hated Sailor Moon for legitimate reasons and then others it's just simply they just hated it because it's it's a girl show or something like that, you know. That sort of thing. You know, because that was one of the reasons there. And then, of course, the, the people who hated Power Rangers were always the ones that hated it because of the special effects or the cheesiness and stuff like that or whatever reasons, you know. You know. That sort of stuff. And it was like the case with uh, Star Wars for that matter, you know, there were some people that just preferred the original trilogy over the prequels and that sort of stuff. And, and then again, there were certain people that just didn't get why Star Wars is, is popular or the case with Star Trek and they probably get the two mixed up because, you know, they don't really know any better. That sort of thing. And I think it was just dumb how certain people could be that way towards uh, Star Wars and Star Trek, you know. Especially when you anger the fan base of some sort. Which is really, really stupid, you know. So, anyways. Okay, let's see. Okay. As far as, um... As far as with, like, the, the rest of, like, certain fan bases and stuff like that, and a lot of times, I think as I kind of got older about it now, it's like, you know, I kind of learned to not take it too seriously in some ways. And then learned to also ignore criticisms of certain fandoms and that sort of thing there. You know. Especially how it was with, with uh, Sailor Moon for that matter. And the fact was, <laughs> this is kind of a bit strange, as I kind of said before about all that, when I talk about this sort of thing. Because this whole, the whole uh, thing I had to mention so far about it was, it took like an entire year for me to pull out of that kind of thing, because it was just the whole flame war of uh, people who didn't like Sailor Moon for whatever reason, and people who did like Sailor Moon, you know, and think that these people were just idiots for whatever reason, and then, and then it goes on and on and on and on, and, and that uh, a lot of people on my side of the argument was that if they didn't like Sailor Moon, they didn't really have to watch it. And that it's not like someone was strapping them in the chair and, and forcing them to watch Sailor Moon. 
as far as that goes, but then they were just acting like the whole show was like that. And that was just really the basis of that whole flame war that I was participating in the first place. Yeah. And then again, it was the same thing with people who hated Power Rangers or who hated any other thing of that sort. That all they did, all they had to do was not watch it. And it's not like anybody was forcing them to watch these shows. But they always acted like it was such a big deal. You know. But I think a part of it was just them doing that because they, they were trying to prove a point how how uh, they just like the fandoms or, or whatever it is, you know, that sort of thing. You know, which, uh, which I wouldn't necessarily say that I wouldn't understand that sort of thing, you know. But in the same case, you know, as I stated before about it, you know, there was, even now it's like people have grown up with Sailor Moon, Pokemon, and Power Rangers, and all that. And that is just ingrained in their childhood and all that there. Because I remember one time, uh, I think when I was visiting a doctor for whatever reason, and I was wearing this uh, shirt that is referencing Sailor Moon as far as that goes, and the doctor didn't get the shirt there, but the the nurse got what the shirt was about, you know, because then she told me, like, oh, her daughter watched Sailor Moon when her daughter was about five or six back in the day. And to this day, as far as that goes, with the end fighting between the, the fans there is, well, which is better, the dick dog, the original, or the Viz Media dog, that sort of thing. Yeah. And in a way, I mean, I hadn't really seen the Viz Media dub, but I think I saw like bits and pieces of it, but I would say the Viz Media dub uh, is all right there, you know, at least he kept a uh, suicide as a male, you know, even though in the, the original dub, they, they changed suicide to a woman, and, but that was mainly because all those, those, uh, soccer moms would get all upset if, if they had such character to be gay and all this sort of stuff and then looking at this now you know with like the Loud House you know that there to this day there are some people that ha that dislike the show simply because of the fact that Clyde's parents are gay and that and that they just go and rail on the usual religious diatribes and all that sort of stuff. But it's like this one video a few years ago, like on College Humor, you know, where he said, religious people are nerds, you know, and how it's funny how such people like who are proselytizing religion are the same people who who would ask you to like watch a certain show like that that is a huge fandom like Torchwood or Deadwood or whatever it's called you know? and then they said like how the two religious people be arguing is like the same as like the two nerds arguing you know when they were when they were arguing over Star Wars of that sort and they were saying about like how there would be somebody there that was sorted all out and all that. 
you know, this sort of stuff, which is, which is pretty funny that I would say about that sort of thing there. But it is kind of true about certain fandoms and stuff like that, that certain people would just take it way too seriously for that matter, and there are certain people that would just not really quite understand that sort of thing, you know. And basically, I think that's just basically what I wanted to say as far as when it comes to fandoms and stuff like that. You know, I could go on and on about this sort of stuff, but, you know, I've already been talking for about 15 minutes so far, you know, and I don't want to go around and waste up my battery on my cell phone, you know, that sort of thing. So, anyways, talk to you guys later.